your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come for you today is your life so full of duty that your lord is crowded out do you neglect to study and to pray would your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come for you christian greetings to our viewers at home another opportunity has been awarded to us by our lord to sit at the foot of the cross where we get comfort and where we get guidance we thank him for his message with me here today is garabu muntle Sipo, dandala ungezile i'm brenda Nube, your host our lesson for today says from the lion's den to the angel's den shall we bow our heads in prayer sissy paul pray for us let's close our eyes our gracious and kind heavenly father we want to thank you dear lord for waking us up this morning we thank you for having brought us here today to study your word May your Holy Spirit tabernacle with us, for you have said that whenever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are as well. Yes, Lord. We pray, dear Lord, that you may truly gather with us. Unveil yourself to us, because the study of your word is truly an unveiling of you, of who you are and who you want us mm -hmm. to become as you reveal your will to us. Please help us to be good servants to you and help us to preach your word accordingly as you would yourself if you were here. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome once again. The title of our study lesson is From the Lion's Den to the Angel's Den. Our memory text comes from Daniel chapter 6, verses 4. I read in your hearing. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no fault because he was faithful nor was there any error or fault found in him. That is Daniel chapter 6, verses 4. Amen. Now, the prophet Daniel is not only a spiritual model for God's end time people, but rather his character is also exemplary for workplace environment in secular matters. Hmm. Now, when we, when we look carefully to the memory text, we see that because of Daniel's uh, excellent spirit, he was placed above the, the satraps and the presidents and the officials and the governors of the Persian Empire. And that evoked jealousy. And as a result, they then sought to conspire against him. Hmm. But now, the memory text talks about Daniel, <laughs> that they wanted something wanting in him. They wanted to find some corruption in him. Hmm. And because they couldn't find anything, that's why Daniel was able to stand. But nevertheless, still he was um, delivered to them. Now. It makes me wonder that if Daniel was corrupt like the government officials of today, mm. his enemies would have butchered him. Yeah. Yes. Mm. But because of they found no fault in Daniel, Daniel was able to stand. They had to work twice as much mm. to frame him yes. than they did because of his faithfulness. And this is saying something to me and you and the children of God at home, mm. that we need to be faithful in our dealings, particularly in secular issues. Yeah. Mm. We need to be faithful when it comes to work because there are many, many patient governors at work, people who are plotting our downfall, people who are looking for the slightest thing that they can use against you. Mm. Corruption, yes, no corruption. Mm. It's, it's it's very it's very interesting uh, that you've mentioned that we as children of God we also ought to 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 live uh, the right life so that people don't find fault in us because sometimes it becomes even very difficult for us to preach the gospel because they can find something that mm. they can hold us with mm. you understand yeah. so yeah. this is the excellent spirit that we find in in in, in Daniel yes. because he was able to in fact he's, he's an example to us as children of God that this is how as a child of, as a child of God you should live your life so that even if people in the world try to look for a mistake in your life they don't find none mm. and the beautiful thing is that um you don't have to, to to use your your powers and your strength and all that to 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 in, in order for you to to to, to actually um, protect yourself, but you, you, your your life itself will actually mm -hmm. speak for you. Of yeah. course. Yeah. One course. thing that stands out from the introduction of the lesson is that um, our faithfulness in the secular dealings yes. in the world 
is determined by how faithful we are to God. To God, yes. Mm. Mm. If you fail to be faithful to God, how will how will you respect the people you are working with who are way beyond beneath God's authority? Excellent. Okay, when we go back to the introduction of the lesson, mm. I want us to look at the fact that Darius, uh, Babylon is taken over. Darius, the new king, comes in mm. and he appoints Daniel mm. to yeah. be part of the new government. Yes. Uh, the writer of the lesson says, he recognized the wisdom in Daniel. Mm. Now mm. I said and I thought to myself, when did he recognize this? Did mm. he hear of things about Daniel mm. while Babylon was still Babylon? Mm. Because it couldn't have been at that very moment. Mm. Yeah. Because they just took over the city and then the next thing, Daniel becomes part of the new, new government. Yeah. And not only that, it is a matter of time and then Daniel is made head of the other wise men in, in Persia, exactly. mm. uh, above the satraps and the other um, the governors, governors oh, you know. Yeah. He is in charge, and then that creates jealousy yeah. from the other governors mm. Mm -hmm. about uh, um, uh, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. And then, not only that, the writer then moves us from the scenario of David and takes us to heaven. Mm. Mm. where we find the man who is the originator of jealousy, mm. Mm. who commits mm. the original mm. sin, who is Lucifer. Mm. 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 Lucifer is in a perfect environment. Yeah. He is serving a perfect God mm. with perfect angels. And then he is jealous of Jesus Christ yeah. to an extent that he even assembles the heavenly hosts. Mm. to try and tell them how disgruntled he is mm. about the kingdom of mm. God. Mm. 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 Wow. Uh, I, I, think, I think right here um, in, this, in this lesson, it's very beautiful uh, in this um, scenario of Daniel's life. Yeah. Um, we are actually, uh, you just put it right, that um, the right of the lesson took us straight from uh, the scenario of Daniel straight to heaven. Mm. In, in fact, here, what, what, what I see, what, what the picture that is being painted here is that um, where sin originated, it was not actually here on earth. Mm. It, it, we were actually being shown the spirit behind the sins, uh, the sins you understand? Of course. Because you see here, Daniel is not, I'm sure Daniel understood actually that um, it was the spirit that is, it was in those people yeah. uh, that was actually making them. That, that, that is why Daniel did not contest him. Mm. and say, no, I am righteous and all that. No, he continued living his life the way he was living his life, believing mm. in God, being faithful to God, you understand? Because mm. he understood that the spirit that was in those people, it was the spirit of the enemy. Mm. Now now that you have taken us to heaven to actually um, to see where all these things started, um, Dan, uh, Satan fighting, um, Lucifer fighting Christ in heavenly places. Yes. Now he has brought that thing here upon upon on planet earth and it's it, it's it's the sad truth that um we as children of god as long as we subscribe to god and we we worship god and him alone and we do things right we will always find people who will persecute us for for living the right life because this thing started in heaven yeah. mm. lucifer fought with the system of of god in heaven yeah. he will fight with the system of god here on planet earth so yeah. the jealousy comes there and in fact the the, the, the people of the world we, we must understand as children of God that they should be jealous of the children of God because if they do not believe in God, they will possess the very same spirit that started the war in heaven. Mm. Okay, mm. very true. Let us also notice something. Um, King Darius puts Daniel in charge of the other governors and the satraps because he realizes that Daniel is faithful. Mm. Now, this makes uh, the other governors jealous against David, uh, Daniel mm. for this one reason. Mm -hmm. um, just like any other government, mm -hmm. fraud mm. And, and, mm -hmm. and corruption mm -hmm. could have affected the government. Mm. So Daniel is set there not only uh, to serve the king, but to supervise mm. the mm. other governors, mm. to look at how they run their accounts, mm. to mm. make sure that there is no fraud yeah. in the government of Darius. Exactly. And faithful Daniel as he is, mm. 
There is no corruption. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Even those who wanted to do it <laughs> are not getting a chance of doing it. Amen. That creates the jealousy. That's mm. one of the reasons mm. Mm. why they are so jealous against David, against Daniel, because he doesn't want any any illicit profit yeah. mm. uh, 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 for the officers. Exactly. And some of them were looking for just that. Mm. So that's, that creates a lot of jealousy. Yeah. 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 And, you know, their jealousy on, on Daniel's administrative work as a government official in the Persian Empire, caused them to want to look for loopholes in Daniel's work. And mm -hmm. they were looking for anything to accuse him by. Mm. But you know, when I sat home and I thought about this accuse part, that they wanted to accuse Daniel of corruption, but because they found nothing on him, they had nothing to accuse him on. Mm. But when I looked at that, they, the way they accused Daniel is very interesting mm. because there is a difference between framing and accusing. Mm. Mm. Uh, if I accuse you, it's because uh, you did something. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. But if I frame you, I'm saying you did something you didn't do. Mm. But if you look at chapter 6 as a whole, mm. Daniel chapter mm. 6, mm. Mm. you see Very that the, 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 the governors are looking for something tangible. Yes. So they want something that Daniel has truly did. Mm. Yeah. And Daniel gave them nothing. nothing. Mm. Because Daniel was upright. And I love what um, Sissy Post <laughs> said on the other side. And he said, there was a power behind Daniel's obedience and faithfulness. Mm. 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 And that power was God. You see, he was faithful in his um, administrative work as a government official because in his mind, he was worshiping God. Exactly. And God required faithfulness from Daniel's side. Exactly. And that is, I think it's that God, I think that's why he fueled this excellent spirit in Daniel. Exactly. Hmm. Because he knew that Daniel would reflect the God of heaven and the principles of heaven at work. And my question is, do we take Jesus to work? Mm. We don't necessarily have to preach Christ at work, mm. but mm. we can preach him through our dealings and character, exactly. our uprightness yes, exactly. at work. That's true. That and true. That's, they didn't find it. And <laughs> it says then, the Bible says they went to conspire against him. Mm. And because they couldn't find anything to accuse Daniel with, mm. they had to create a situation mm. whereby Daniel will, will have no choice but to choose between keeping the commandments of God and the commandments of the state. Yeah. Mm. But you see, the power of, of this new plan that, that they're they they developing against Daniel is in the fact that Daniel is faithful to God. Yes. Mm. So they use Daniel's faithfulness to God and his commandment against Daniel. Mm. Mm. And it makes me wonder about how powerful was Daniel's trustworthiness to an extent that, mm. okay, so he loves his God, we will use his mm. God against him. But mm. the, the, the denominator is that Daniel was faithful. Mm. 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 Yeah, and then uh, it makes me wonder mm. if any of us were to be put in the position of Daniel, mm. uh, would we choose to please God or would choose popularity with men, mm. which then becomes the reason why many a person mm. falls? I mm. think what testimony does your neighbor at home have about mm. you? Mm. Mm. Would they proclaim that, oh, this mom Brenda actually worships God. She is a faithful servant of God at work. What do they say about you? Mm. Do you say anything about Jesus at all? Mm. Mm. It, it says it's, a lot about our characters and what, how we need to self-introspect ourselves. Because mm. mm. it's not only how we live that portrays who we are, but what others have to say about us exactly. as they see exactly. us live. And that is actually true. That and then we should, true. we should ask ourselves, are we worthy a plot or not? Mm. Mm. But, but here is a plot against mm. Daniel. Mm. 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 They have mm. not found fault. Exactly. Yet still they say, mm. the only way we can trap this man Mm. is the law, the law of his God. Yeah. Mm. Let's put a decree or something that compels him to go against the law of his God. Mm. Then that way we have caught Daniel because we know for sure yeah. <laughs> you will not go against the law of his God. Amen. Now and the plot knew. is in motion. <laughs> yeah. They actually knew that this man, the way he is faithful to his God, mm. this mm. is the only way mm -hmm. we could catch him. Mm -hmm. Because they knew that he was not going to be disobedient to God. Yeah. Mm. Even at work. <laughs> Even yeah. at work. Yeah. So they knew that if we plot against him, that is the only way we could get him and get him killed. Because, I, I, I mean, <laughs> there, was no, there was nothing else that they could find there. Mm. He was faithful yeah. in everything. Yeah. So the only thing that was left for them to do was to say, okay, you know what, let's just trap this man. Mm. Maybe we need to realize also that as Christians today in mm. our modern bad world, mm. we can be good. Mm. We can live that upright life and holy and just life mm. Mm. as Dave, Daniel did. Mm. Yes, it, it actually gives us a challenge. Mm. Mm. It gives us a serious challenge. You, you, you are right there, Sisipo. Uh, and, um, 
I worry uh, about us a lot because we are living in the in in, in the last days. Mm-hmm. And if you if if you read in the lesson uh, right there in the beginning, the writer said, um, "This is what will happen in the children of God uh, if they are faithful to their God." Uh, now the question comes to me: Would um, are we? <laughs> Are we prepared to live uh, that kind of life that will actually even provoke jealousy uh, in, in the mind of the devil to say, mm. okay, you know mm. what, I need to start mm. persecuting these people or mm. I must plot. Because the reality is that they are going to plot against us if we are faithful to God. That That's is true. Way. That's in the true. end, in, in, in these last days, they are going to trap us with the commandments of God. Yeah. You understand? And no. I think this is also a reminder to us with God, this, guys, this is what you should prepare yourselves for. Because if you are faithful to me as your God, this is what they will do to you. They will trap you. Even if they don't find fault in you, yeah. you will be trapped yeah. for, for, for being obedient Amen. to okay. the commandments. Okay. Amen. Now the plot is in motion. Mm-hmm. They go to the king. Mm-hmm. Um, when they go to the king, they present themselves mm. as as people want to people who respect the mm. king, mm. who appreciate his authority, mm. who want to give him even more authority in his kingdom. King, uh, we are asking you that for the next thirty days, mm. no one should worship another god. Mm. Everyone should worship only you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thinking. The king is so reluctant about the matter because mm. he's enjoying that moment of glory, number mm. one. Number yes. two, he doesn't see anyone who is a challenge to his kingdom on that matter. Mm. He forgets about Daniel. And here, he's also given wrong information. They say to him, we have consulted mm-hmm. with all governors mm. and all officers. Mm. And all of them have seen that what we are asking is in order. Yes. And they have not consulted Daniel. Yeah. And they know for sure Daniel would not agree. Mm. But for some, for one reason mm. or the other, that escapes the mind of the king. Mm. 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 And he thinks, oh, this sounds good. Yeah. I see no fault in it. Yeah. It's my moment of glory. It's yeah. my defining moment. Mm. Let me allow this to happen. Yes. A decree is written. It is signed by the king with his ring. Mm. It cannot be revoked. Mm. It's it's mm. the law of the of the Meds and the Persians. It cannot be revoked. Mm. It goes out mm. with the penalty. Not even the king mm. has the authority to change that. Mm. 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 And I wanted I want us also to compare it that mm. you know every time God sets a law, mm. it seems as if as if the devil also sets a counterfeit yes. because yes. it's only the law of God that mm. cannot be changed. Yeah. Yeah. It's only the yes. law of God. Yeah. That cannot revolt. Yeah, and here is a set of human beings yeah. who think yeah. they can also set a law yeah. that yeah. cannot yeah. be revoked. Yeah. And God, one way or the other, is just yeah. about to prove yeah. he can revoke yeah. that yeah. law. Yeah. Yeah. And um, while we are still talking about this decree and the plotting against uh, Daniel, mm. uh, something comes to mind uh, that um, we as children of God, we need to, to really prepare our minds and our hearts. For, for, for such things because you know what um we know very well the prophecies have been fulfilled many of them in front of us and we know that there's that one thing that we are waiting for and that decree that will say okay on this time you are not supposed to do um you, you're not supposed to work you're not supposed to do this you're not supposed to do that you're supposed to be going to church you're supposed to to be walking uh, you're supposed to be worshiping but mm. you will find that that will be a trap against the true worship true worshipers of yes. god yeah. so we as children of god we need to prepare ourselves for such a time because the time will come when in, in fact here daniel is being forced to worship in a certain way you understand mm. and the time will come for us to be told this is how you should worship God. Yeah. If you worship this way, this is the wrong way. Yeah. You understand? So we as children of God, we need to prepare ourselves for such things. Yeah. Because the decree will come. Mm. Yeah. And I think mm. just, just to set it in context of, mm. of Daniel chapter 6, mm. when we look at the book of Daniel, mm. it's not the first time a law is being enacted here. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first time that happened, it was in Daniel chapter 3, mm-hmm. verse 5 to 6. Yes where a stringent government law was given, mm. which had to do with spiritual things. Exactly. And it makes me wonder, I mean, why, why as a state enact laws that control conscience of society? Exactly. Mm. Because exactly. the state has to do with secular things. Yes. yes. But the first person to do this was Nebuchadnezzar, mm. where he enacted a law 
saying that at such and such a time when you hear such and such instruments, exactly. you must bow down in worship. And worship. Yes, Where exactly. does the state get off? Mm. Mm. In enforcing a, 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 a civic law pertaining mm. to worship. To and worship. we see this behavioral pattern of the devil who is mm. the power working behind. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, Repeat yes. this in, 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 in chapter, chapter 6. six. Yes. In mm. Daniel chapter 6. Yes. And this time again, it's in a plot where government officials are coming together mm. at the demise of Daniel yes. to enact once again a civic law mm. that will seek to control the mm. conscious of society. Mm. And you know, I, I'm reminded, and this shows us a pattern that the devil throughout history has always used when, whenever church and state come together. Mm. Mm. We know mm. that blood is spilt. Mm. This is this is true exactly. history. That is true. And that is why even I mean even in the medieval times. There was the church mm. and there was the state. Yes. And when that came together, lives were forfeited yes. because of people wanted to control the conscience. The conscience. Mm. And this is where we have um, Protestants, Christians, and we also have secularists, to my surprise, mm. who advocate the separation of church and state, who believe that religious institutions should not have any constitutional rights mm. whatsoever to play a direct role in the department or development of civic laws no 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 religion must influence the government when it comes to law exactly. mm. and legislature mm. because we know that the result of that is blood forfeited mm. it's been a tool that the devil has used throughout history mm. and since the daniel is the prophet of the end we have reason to believe that even in the last days mm. Mm. it will, it will, it will repeat itself it will mm. okay mm. Mm. Okay, um, uh, thank you about that, uh, uh, Brother Garabo. Now, let's notice a decree has been set forth mm -hmm. and Daniel goes to pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is told, you are not going to pray to any other God mm -hmm. except the king. And then Daniel, as was his custom, does what he usually does, mm -hmm. prays to the God of heaven, yeah. and that gets him into trouble. Maybe before we go deep into the prayer of Daniel, I would want to pose a question to all of us. Yes, the Bible says in Matthew 6, chapter 6, but you, when you pray, go into your room, yep. and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who mm. is in the secret place. Mm. Your father who is in the secret mm. will reward you openly. Yeah. And then the question is, why doesn't Daniel simply pray quietly without anyone seeing him? <laughs> um, so... Basically, Daniel is making a statement to say he will stand by God no matter the decree demands his life. Mm. Mm. They saw that he used to pray that way. As Ongi said at some point um, that they knew he would be faithful to God. Mm. And that was the only way they could test him mm. that they knew he would fail. Mm. And thus he would be killed and they would get rid of him, which was their goal. Mm. Right? Mm. So he... In spite of knowing that, he stands for God because he knows eventually the greater reward is with God, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. with man. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I mean, we may lose our lives on earth. If we lose our lives for the sake of God, eternal life awaits us. Mm -hmm. That is the promise of God. And that's the most important thing that we need to always remember as we live as Christians and face challenges, maybe at work or just in the society. Mm -hmm. so, so we always need to stand for God, Amen. no matter it demands our lives. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mamupi, coming back also, just to add on what Sisipa has said concerning your question. Yeah. You know, Daniel is an experienced state person, mm. statesman. Mm. He's experienced at this time. Remember, he served under Nebuchadnezzar and his grandsons, Tana. Mm -hmm. mm. And he was a youth when he went there. At this time, he's an old, old. man. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. he's an experienced state person who knows how these things work. Mm. Yeah. But remember, we touched on Daniel chapter uh, 3, mm. that he's seen this play out before. Yeah, yes, mm. yes. And he understands very well that there's a cosmic implication yes. mm -hmm. of a cosmic war behind the scenes. Yes. Mm. So Daniel is not only looking at the decree, mm. yes. yeah. but he is looking at the spiritual element of the decree. Yes. Mm. And he wants to send a message mm -hmm. Mm. to the power that is using the government as well as the government, mm. that he will worship the true God. And thus he opens mm. the windows and worship <laughs> his God, <laughs> sending Amazing. a message. The Bible says you must pray in secret. Mm. But here he had to say and make a public declaration that he will only serve the living God. Yes. And sometimes from our faithfulness, mm. souls are saved. Mm. Mm. I have a personal testimony. I remember at work where I was uh, I was forced 
well, they wanted me to work on a particular day of which I worship. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, in front of the white people. And I remember one of my, 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 my colleagues, Uchabu, if I may, Uchabu was like, dude, no one stands up to them like that. No one. And she told me that that kind of changed her life. And she later on came to me and said, you know, you touched me that day and I want a Bible study. Mm. But my question is, if I never stood up for what I believe, mm. yeah. to my employers, not only the government, just mm. a mere employer, would Jabu have opened up to mm. consider the God of the Bible? Mm -hmm. My faithfulness, your faithfulness does a lot. And that's why Daniel sent a message by opening the windows and playing 9-9, nine -nine, <laughs> if I may say. Amen? <laughs> and just to add to what you were saying, um, you know, the writer puts a scenario here as if Daniel has, has, has a double story, he has an upper room, mm -hmm. that when he opens <laughs> his window, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody <laughs> sees him, <laughs> that he's now praying. And look at this um, a very important fact about Daniel. He opens his window towards Jerusalem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember when yeah. the, the temple was being inaugurated, mm -hmm. Solomon yeah. says to the children of mm -hmm. Israel, every time when you pray we will pray towards the temple mm, yes, because yeah. the presence of god oh, rests yeah. on the temple yeah. so when daniel yeah. prays he opens his mm. window towards jerusalem mm. because he believes mm. once mm. the glory and the presence of god rested on jerusalem yeah. Yeah. so there shall he pray <laughs> because he believes amen i just need to I, I just love that jerusalem motif that you're coming with right now okay see in the old testament time particularly in the times of daniel Remember in Jerusalem, there was the temple which had the most holy place where God's presence was manifested. Mm. Yes. So it was, according to Jewish tradition, to face to the, to the position of the temple, wherever it is, wherever you are in the world, mm. because you knew that the presence of God was manifesting there. Yes. But now that Jesus has ascended up into heaven, mm. into the heavenly sanctuary, when we pray, our prayers go directly to heaven. Mm. Mm. I just needed to bring it, that, that wonderful element in. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, Daniel realizes that we are resident alien on mm. planet Earth. Mm. Our true citizenship mm. is in heaven, mm. which is a challenge to all of us mm. to always remember that we are alien here. We have a home in heaven. Yeah. Uh, the Jerusalem is still to come. Oh. And there is our citizen, citizenship. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. faithfulness is required of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Daniel prays. Mm -hmm. Now the governors run to the king. Mm -hmm. um, we have a problem. Yeah. One of your... Now, uh, Daniel, one of the persons in the kingdom has decided to go against the decree. Mm. Now, when the king asks who, they are no longer saying um, uh, Daniel, the governor. They say that captive mm. is now addressed mm. as the captive, mm. which on its own tells us a story. Mm. They could have been jealous of the fact that Daniel is foreign. Yeah. He's not one of us, mm. yet he has been set above us. Mm. Not only is he set above us, he worships his own God mm -hmm. in the midst of our gods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes them very angry. Mm -hmm. So when they go to the king now, they say, that captive. Just sorry to interject. Am I hearing xenophobia in that? <laughs> Some Tribalism? Yes. yes. That because Actually. of this man cannot hold us. We captive. Just a little slave. Mm -hmm. And you know, and this, when I look at last year and the xenophobic attacks that happened, Mm -hmm. in South Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you look at the story of Daniel and the spirit that the governors are coming with. Mm -hmm. That's where we see the things like xenophobia are not from God. They, mm -hmm. they are not inspired by God. Mm -hmm. They are the spirit of the evil one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And they are exactly. not new. <laughs> they are from back then. Yes. Exactly. They've been coming from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. that when the devil brings an old sin, yeah. he, gives us, he gives it a new makeup mm -hmm. so that when it comes, it looks a, a little new. Yeah. Yeah. The king is in trouble here. He has no option. They say the king immediately, when they said Daniel, he said, oh, what have I done? Mm. Yeah. He tries all systems out to make sure that Daniel is exonerated mm. from the, the implications of the decree. It does not happen. Mm. Daniel must be sent to the lion's yeah. death. Yes. And I think that's, that's, that must have been very uh, um, stressful to the king because yes. obviously, um, he knew the history of Daniel, where he came from, and the stuff that happened while he was still there, including his brothers, um, uh, Sharak, Mishak, and Abidniku. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure in his mind he was he, he was also thinking about those things. And hence now you find that uh, right there towards the end, um, when after he has put him in the in the in the lion's den, he comes mm. and he's crying. Mm. 
he comes there, he is crying and uh, he's asking, has, has, has your God... <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's because of the history, you understand? Yes. It's because he understood the stuff that happened in the past, you understand? He knows, he heard about this God, <laughs> but because of the decree that he, he, he had put, he had no choice but to do what uh, he had agreed to do with those uh, governors and, um, and, and, and setups and all those no people. Choice, mm. no. he, had, he had no choice, no. you understand? And I, I love the fact that God did not uh, 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 interfere at that particular time to say to this man, no, don't put this man because I will take him out. Mm. He, he, had, he had to allow him, yeah. to him into the dungeon. You, you understand? <laughs> yes. He had to allow him so that this man, this particular one now, must see the power of God as well. Yeah. He must not yeah. hear from mm. other people you understand mm. because sometimes you find ourselves believing in god but we don't have our personal experience yeah. mm. you understand yeah. now god had to allow him to have a personal experience mm. and to know who god is so that he can tell yeah. I'm <laughs> the sorry, same mama. people i'm yes. so sorry I, it's just so profound mama mm -hmm. that he's saying god permitted daniel's mm. enemies mm. to deliver him to the place of condemnation which is the lion's den. yes mm. yes but, you know, I think it's fair mm. for God to do that. And I'll tell you why. Mm. Because back again in Daniel chapter 3, mm. his friends were cast into the furnace of fire. Mm. Yeah, they had it. their fair share of experience with God mm. yes. and deliverance. Now it was Daniel's time to exactly. also have an experience of a supernatural <laughs> deliverance. Interesting. You know, and so it's fair. It's, it's fair it's, for God to permit it. It's and it's, it's so beautiful because now it's it's both the experience of Daniel and the king at the same time. The new king. Yeah. Yes. It's beautiful. Amazing. Yes. It's fair. Um, <laughs> Sisipo, can you read for us Daniel chapter... Um, uh, 6 verses 13 and verses 18 to 22. Okay, um, verse 13 of chapter 6, Daniel. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Okay, this 18. Verse 18 to 23. Mm -hmm. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king aroused very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. Mm. And when he came to the den, he cried with a, lament with a lamentable voice. Mm unto daniel and the king spake and said unto daniel o daniel servant of the living god oh. is thy god whom thou servest continually yes. able to deliver thee from the lions Lord. then said daniel unto the king o king live forever <laughs> my god hath sent his angels and hath shut the lions mouths oh. that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency has found for as much as before him, innocency has he found in me. And also before thee, O king, have mm. I done no hurt. Mm. Then was the king exceeding glad for him. And according that, they should take Daniel out, up of the, out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. And no manner of hurt was found upon him because he, was, he believed in the God. There's something in God. very deep here. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Are you listening to this man, uh, Darius, when he comes to the graves, what he says? <laughs> it is as though he was also praying for Daniel to be saved. He mm. was. He was fasting for Daniel to be saved. You, you Very understand? interesting. Hey. Very interesting. Now he stopped praying to his gods and then now he's praying, praying to, to, the God mm, of Daniel. to the God of Daniel. Wow. He's fasting. He's he fasting. refuses music. Mm -hmm. wow. He refuses food. Mm -hmm. Sleep escapes him. Mm -hmm. And as, as, as dawn comes, he runs yeah. to the lion's den. And then he comes there. Daniel, here's your God. Same and he too. goes there with that hope that he is still alive. Mm. Because he speaks to him. Mm. You understand? So this is, this is just so profound. It's, it's, it's so beautiful. Mm. It's so beautiful that there are certain things that we, when we look at them, they look so bad. And, uh, and we think that, you know what, this... Is, is a very bad situation. Little did we, do we know that it is going to do something more powerful than yeah. what we actually see. Because look at this man. When he put his signet and all that uh, sealing uh, <laughs> the lion's den, obviously uh, they celebrated. Yes. Oh, yeah. The, the enemies, enemies. It has been done. The yeah. enemies celebrated. But now the king 
the king's mentality changed. He started praying to another god. Mm. And uh, mind you, that that the the, the 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 decree was saying, if anyone prays to another god, <laughs> god. Mm-hmm. Yeah, except that, yours. Mm. Now the situation changes. The king is praying, praying to, to another his god, god mm. and he prays to the god of Daniel. Hey. <laughs> Are you not <laughs> saying that God used the situation mm. with allowing Daniel into the den mm. yes. in order to save the king to exactly. true worship? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So that means God permits us into situations because he's looking at saving the third person who is looking. Beautiful. Mm. Um, let, let us also get some life lessons from this mm. that we are challenged that, therefore that in our day-to-day living whatever situation we find ourselves in we should resort back to God in mm. prayer. We should not be uh, tempted to an extent that we become like soul. When things get tough, we go and inquire from the wizard of Endo. And then our end shall be like that of soul. So here Daniel is teaching us a lesson. When it gets tough, we go back to God and pray. Not only is this contained to the time of Daniel, but to the end time. The children of God are still going to find troublous times, trials. The word of God is therefore saying when those times arrive, Go back to God and pray. The same vindication that was given to Daniel mm. shall be given to the to God's children mm. in the close of time. Amen. Amen. And wow. it's, 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 it's so beautiful that uh, you are saying that um, in, the, um, in, in these last days we will also need to, to also have the same um, kind of spirit that Daniel had. Because you see, when we face challenges here on earth, we are very quick to listen to other voices mm-hmm. which are not from God. And you find that the voice of God, that still small voice telling you, do this, do that, we don't necessarily listen to. Instead of us doing what Daniel did, praying to God and and, 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 and living by his promises, mm-hmm. we tend to be like uh, Saul. Mm. We go and consult. Mm. Trust me, there are so many people out there and um, who once believed in God, mm. but because uh, challenges, trials came into their lives, and uh, and at that at that time you'll find that God uh, uh, permitted those things, like He did to Daniel, to save the next person, and then you fail. You 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 start co- consulting, and the people were looking at you, calling yourself. A child of God. Now start doubting God because of you, because you called yourself a child of God. Mm. It, it, it is a, it is a very dangerous thing to doubt God once you have called yourself a child of God, mm. because now you are also letting other souls disbelieve God. Mm. Mm. You place yourself at, right at the hand of the devil to be used by him to 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 say this God that I said I believe in mm. cannot do. Yeah. Mm. Um, can I can I make a remark not on what you've just said mm. on a particular part I found interesting in that mm. um, after Daniel was thrown into the den, the king gives him a glimmer of hope to say um, he says in his direct words, um, mm. your God whom ye serve continually, he will deliver you. Mm. He left he was faithful mm. to his king and in all of his duties. Yes. Because of that, the king believed. And now is bringing hope to him in his complicated situation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. how we live may save us some time mm. yes. as life that's, goes. That's, that's very good. true. Now, wow. that's very profound. Yes. <laughs> Let's look at the, the vindication of Daniel. Here is a king convicted, mm. repented, becomes a Christian, changes the whole nation. Mm. Mm. Remember King Dara sends a decree now, yeah. the second one, to say, Everyone should worship the God of Daniel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it was in our day and age, we should have said we need a lineup of pastors. We need a master baptism. Yo. The whole nation is yeah. converted. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. They are worshiping the God of Daniel. Yo. Look at the way Daniel has led his life. Yeah. From the time of Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. coming all the way to the king or to, to the time of Tyrus. He's, he's, he's serving in the courts of heathen kings. Yeah. And every time when Daniel arrives, he makes an impact. Yeah. He makes sure that God is known. Yeah. These are giants of faith. Yeah. 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 These are the yeah. people we have chosen to stand with Christ yeah. as he reconciles the word to himself. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so and are we saying that God saved two 
nations under Daniel's uh, uh, exactly. tenure. Exactly. Because it, this happened with the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's happening again with Darius the Mede. It's as if when, whenever God places Daniel in a government, mm -hmm. he places him there to change the president and the government officials and the whole nation. Exactly. Yes. How many of us can be used like that mm -hmm. by God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when we go and work uh, in places of power, high places of power, we are corrupted by that power. Yes. Mm. We Too don't purify that power mm. with our faithfulness to God. And mm. this is what we see about Daniel. We need more Daniels in these last days. Yes. Mm. In fact, I, I was about to say uh, something similar to, to that, that in this world, it does not need crowds of people who don't believe mm. in God, but it mm. just needs one, one, one good, mm. one faithful good mm. man. And God, with that man, will save the nation. Look, it, it's just one man. Okay, mm. it was three boys. Mm -hmm. And then the whole situation changed. Mm. Mm. And now it's just one man. Mm. Just one man. And then the whole nation changes. And even the decrees now of mm. that nation changes because of one man. Mm. I pray. Man. I mm. captive. A mm, captive, a captive, a captive, yes, a foreigner, a foreigner, yeah. a foreigner to put it right, mm -hmm. a foreigner to put it right, because mm. <laughs> yeah, we need to get uh, off that that mentality yes. of, of xenophobia in our yeah. minds, yes. yeah. because I mean, look, when 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 a, a foreign man is put in, into power, people start uh, looking at him with that eye that no, this one is a foreign, we are mm. not going to listen to him. But yes. look at God, he takes a man from the foreign land mm -hmm. and then he places him there and then he saves. Mm. Mm. Let us never forget that God knows no borders. Mm -hmm. He's not a respecter of men. Exactly. Amen. He chooses Amen. vessels of honor. Amen. He chooses who to use. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Mm. As long as it's for the gain of his kingdom. Let us also look at this at a larger scale. Towards mm. the end of time, mm. Yeah. Mm. children of God shall be delivered. Mm. 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 Uh, uh, children of God shall, shall first go through persecutions. Mm. Mm. Not all of them will be delivered. Mm. Some will be left to be martyrs. Mm. Mm. God allows that. Yeah. Some of the people are delivered now mm. for the mm. sake of other mm. people mm. to repent. Some are left to perish mm. as if God does not vindicate them on mm. this side of heaven. Mm. Mm. And their vindication awaits mm. on the other side of heaven mm. when Jesus comes for the second coming. Mm. Let us also look at another important aspect here. When the king goes to the lion's den mm. to, to, to call for Daniel, Daniel indicates that truly his God has saved him. Yeah. He is taken out. Mm. And then the conspirators mm. are thrown into the lion's mm. den, this time with their wives. Yeah and their children. <laughs> um, and then the writer asked a question here. Was it fair that the children and the wives are also thrown into the lion's den? <laughs> the writer also indicates that it was an ancient law yes. that said if one member of the family should do that which is not right mm. in the kingdom, the mm. whole family mm. 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 should pay mm. for the debt of that one family member. Mm. So the whole family perishes yes, because of one because member. of one person. Mm. Nevertheless, uh, the Lord puts it clearly in Deuteronomy 24 verse 16 mm. that he does not let children die for the sins of their parents. Mm. Mm. How merciful our mm. God is. Mm. Mm. He makes sure that even if the family is cursed, mm. if there is but one person mm. in the mm. family mm. who can break the curse, yeah. Then the rest of the generations that follow after that yeah. are saved. Yeah. Amen. Then That's this good. should say to us, yeah. if back then a family could die because of one person who has not done right, yeah. then we should make it our duty yeah. that our families are saved yeah. because of this one, one person, person who, who can do right. Oh. Amen. Our workplace oh. is saved oh. because of this one person yeah. who can do yeah. something right. And you know, just my, my, my last sentiment on this one is when I look at the fact that they were cast into the den and they were devoured and they were not saved. These are the enemies. Yes. Uh, this is telling me something which is the, the overarching message of Daniel chapter 6. Mm. That there is something that we call jealousy in this world. Mm. And it follows us wherever you go, in our families, in our workplaces, with our neighbors and everything. But it's saying that when jealousy is ripe, mm. death mm. is the result. That mm. those who are jealous, who do things at the demise of the faithful, mm. Mm. shoot their mm. own foot. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the jealousy will come and sting them. Mm. And mm. This, this is saying to me that I must pray to God for a clean heart. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. That God might protect my heart from jealousy. Because someone who's jealous is someone who's very sick spiritually. Mm. He's very sick. Very mm. critically sick. It's a stone in your chest. Mm. Mm. And this stone is so dangerous it can get you killed. Not the one you're trying to plot the demise of. Not the one in you're fact, jealous it's like of. like cancer. Of, mm. oh. Yeah, jealousy is like cancer. Yeah. Now, it you. Mm. now, the delivery of Daniel mm. is recorded in Hebrews 11. <laughs> oh. What can be called oh, so yeah. <laughs> the Hall of Fame of Faith. Hey. <laughs> Daniel goes in there as well, meaning mm. he is a hero of faith. Mm. Mm. He has mm. walked in the precepts of Red God. Of God. Mm. He has done what is humanly possible mm. to remain within the precepts of God. Yes. And God does his part. And to be corruption free. Mm. <laughs> yes. 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 Corruption free. <laughs> yes. In conclusion of our lessons, our viewers at home, I will read a quotation from one of my favorite writers. Yes, she writes, a careful study of the working out of God's purposes in the history of the nations and in the revelation of things to come will help us estimate at their true value things seen and things unseen and to learn what is the true aim of life, thus viewing things in the time and in the light of eternity. We may, like Daniel and his fellows, live for that which is true, noble and enduring and learning in this life the principles of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, that blessed kingdom that is to endure forever and ever. May we be prepared at the coming, to, at the coming of our Lord and to enter with him into his position. Mm -hmm. May the good Lord keep you. May the Lord who understands your pain, your sorrows, mm -hmm. your gain, your losses, your valley experiences, and your mind and top experiences Keep you in his keeping care till we meet again. Our next lesson study title says, From the Stormy Sea to the Clouds of Heaven. May the good Lord richly bless you till we meet again. God bless. Brother Ongezile will pray for us. Let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Father, for the word that has been shared here. We pray and we ask that, Lord, all these things that we have studied here, Lord, stay in our minds, mold mm. us, and, and, and prepare us for, for, for the second coming of Christ and be a constant reminder that you are coming very soon. Please, Lord, bless the viewers and may you help them to understand the stuff that we've been sharing here with them. May you also help your children, dear Lord, to, 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 to also study more so that they may know and learn about the times that we live in so that they may be able to see things that are about to take place in these last days. Your Father, we thank you so much. Your we bless you. We give you all the glory in Christ today. Jesus. We soon to come. Amen. Is your life so full of duty that your Lord is crowded out? Do you neglect to study and to pray? your heart be ready and would glory fill your soul if your master would come for you